Hello, and welcome to Great.com Talks With. Today, we're talking with Fred Shaw, Director of Public Affairs at Citizens Commission on Human Rights, an organization whose mission is to eradicate abuses committed under the guise of mental health. And if you're new to our podcast, please press subscribe button either on YouTube or your podcast app, because today we're going to learn about an organization that has helped to enact more than 180 laws protecting individuals from abusive or coercive mental health practices. Hello, Fred. Welcome to Great.com Talks. We're excited to have you here. And it is my pleasure to be here. And I thank you for this opportunity to uh, spread our message. Wonderful. Could you please describe Citizens Commission on Human Rights for someone who is not familiar with your work? Well, what uh, the Citizens Commission on Human Rights is a mental health watchdog that exposes psychiatric abuse. Uh, we do not like the fact that uh, people are electroshocking children from zero to five years of age. We do not like the mass drugging of uh, children with drugs that can cause suicidal and homicidal tendencies. Um, we believe that the cure has to be better than the disease. Mm -hmm. Wow, your mission is very noble, and the fact uh, that you are a uh, dog organization uh, um, addressing the issues um, that uh, different practices are done under the guise of mental health, and you are for a more humane, for humane treatment of the people, especially children, and the humane um, solutions. Uh, rather than aggressive and the solutions that can harm individuals. Um, for someone who is not familiar uh, with the terming, um, could you please describe uh, what does psychiatric drugging mean and what does uh, how uh, psychiatric practices are being used and why they are harmful? Well, uh, the psychiatric drugs are drugs such as... Um, Ritalin, Adderall, these are drugs that are prescribed to children. Uh, they're two of the leading drugs prescribed to children. What people don't know is that Ritalin is very similar to the drug cocaine, and Adderall is very similar to the drug meth. And so what we're doing is because there is a lack of technology in the field of mental health, we're not doing mental health. What we're actually doing is mental control. We, if it was mental health, we would be uh, expanding uh, their IQs. They would think faster. They would think clear. That's what health is. But what we do is give a kid a drug or an adult a drug or whoever to slow them down, to make them manageable. That is control. So we generally have to start with, let's really identify what we're doing in this field. And then we can go and progress from there. But if they don't want you to think you're being controlled. So therefore they you know, put it in the package of pretty words, mental health, we think that's good. But when in Germany, when they said racial hygiene, that sounds real good pristine and, and good, but actually it was the way they killed people. So we have to be very careful with the words that we use and make sure they're appropriate for the situation. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for identifying and clarifying the two different terms, the mental health and what is currently being done in pharma industry under uh, the guise of mental health rather than they are actually doing mental control. So instead of addressing and uh, suggesting solutions uh, that can be sustainable, we're just making a solution that is short term and very, very harmful. So educating and raising awareness is very important. And thank you so much for our clarifying that how people um, at this moment are being um, deprived of their human rights under the guise of mental health and what are the reasons for that well one of the things is most people uh, are aware enough that they don't really want to go deal with mental health uh, they've seen um, even in the movies and stuff they've seen the, the depiction of mental health and how you're so limited and restricted um, in the United States, you have more rights as an inmate in a prison than you do in a mental hospital. So now the mental hospital is supposed to be for people who could not control themselves and so forth. But what they've done is made it to where it's almost like a punishment 
uh, thing to where you have no rights. There's all types of things that occur uh, in the mental hospital, uh, patients being taken advantage of, those types of things. Um, if a patient is raped in a mental hospital, um, how do you complain? Because you're already mentally ill. And what if you're complaining about a staff member? Then nobody believes you because you're mentally ill. So it's a breeding ground for all types of atrocities that have to uh, somehow have an oversight that where people actually walk in and inspect what is going on in these mental health. And it can't be psychiatrists and people who are part of the industry who will co-sign because they've actually done those actions themselves. Wow, um, that's the comparison that you made that the person in the mental health institution versus the pencil uh, who is in the prison, the person in the mental health institution has even less rights and uh, they cannot come, um, they cannot defend their rights because uh, they are put a, under a certain label and that certain label and certain institution is in the cycle that goes on and on. And unfortunately, it's very hard for uh, people who face different challenges, the case of of rape, the case of the uh, abuse, they cannot come uh, come and tell about their struggles because the system is built that way that the person with mental health issues, uh, especially in the mental health institution, has less um, rights and their rights are not being um, protected. And there's those are basic human rights, basic rights that every individual, regardless of their health status, should have and should be able um, to have protection protection and unfortunately the society and the institutions are failing on that. Um, you mentioned that um, the pharma industry is using mental control instead of the um, actually providing mental health uh, for people struggling uh, with mental health as, and by providing two drugs that are equivalent of to cocaine and uh, meth. Why does pharma industry keep using those drugs? Uh, psychiatric drugs? Well, the best that I can determine and, and the research I've done, they just really, you know how mental health has a great marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. For The pharmaceutical company has a lot of money. Mm -hmm. At risk of getting in trouble, I would say a lot of the politicians do not know what's truly going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, the FDA, unfortunately, a large percentage of them work for the pharmaceutical companies. So if they're making as much or more money working for the pharmaceutical as they do in their regular job, then everyone knows you don't bite the hand that feeds you. So therefore, drugs that should not even be on the market are being green lighted through. And now we're seeing commercials telling us that ticks and permanent uh, muscle movements and mouth movements and those type of things are normal when you take those drugs. Well, we can't invest in medicine, medicine that actually makes the person better. How, how is it that I can be depressed because somebody in my family died or my mother died or, or whatever. I come in with depression, you give me a drug, and now I start hearing voices. How did that make me get better? And then you give me another drug to, to quiet the voices, and now I feel like committing suicide. And so the treatment has to be better for you than the disease is. Because actually, if I came in depressed and now I'm talking suicide, I got worse. But nobody in the industry says, these people are getting worse. And when I say nobody, I'm not talking about individual, I'm talking about systemic or system-wise. There are individual psychiatrists and psychologists who are against these drugs. There are people out there who have quit the industry. The recruitment into psychiatry is dwindling as it is because people are recognizing that there are no solution. It's just they have this massive marketing campaign and this whole thing on mental health to where now 
normal behavior to situations are being considered mentally ill. So in the United States, we were locked down because of COVID-19. People couldn't get out. They couldn't see their loved ones. They couldn't uh, visit friends. They couldn't. So there is some emotional things that may occur because you can't do that. It does not mean you're mentally ill. It means that you have the appropriate emotional response for the situation that we're looking at. Mm. Yeah, unfortunately, pharma industry is focused on revenue generating profits and uh, marketing rather than actually providing a solution as if they are offering a drug, then can further have side effects, then they can sell more drugs. So the system is built that way that, as you mentioned, even individuals who have um, humane and noble um, approaches, uh, they cannot uh, survive in that system and they are living um, uh, uh, the pharma industry in general because they want to do a noble work they want to do great work they want to de develop drugs that can actually help rather than uh, make uh, individuals with mental health issues struggle even more as your organization um, is a watchdog for mental health and you're also are um, advocating to eradicate the use of psychiatric uh, uh, drugs, but there are many people um, currently uh, around the world um, due to their beliefs uh, that are being uh, forced to consume psychiatric drugs. Could you please tell us why this practice is still um, exists and where is it being uh, used around the globe? Well, you know, uh, again, it comes back to when you have uh, an industry like Big Pharma who has the money that they have to influence doctors. Uh, some of these uh, companies actually put articles or back the, um, the medical journals and things so they influence it. The representatives go to the doctors and present these drugs as being good and so forth. So when the doctor, who is a very busy individual, at least in the United States, when he gets the same information in his medical journal that he gets from the pharmaceutical rep, then he tends to take that as being true. And um, we're having this whole field of medicine being duped to where they believe that these solutions are viable when actually those solutions lead to other problems that make more money for the pharmaceutical company. Then the politicians are influenced by these big companies. You get to be in office. They have the money basically to take any individual and make you a hero through marketing campaigns and things like that. So people understand, and to give you an idea, once I was talking to a political official, um, and I was explaining this to the official. And they said, you know, you're, I think you're right on this. The problem is, if I go against the pharmaceutical companies, then they will take and run somebody against me. And then I won't even be able to do the other good works that I do. So that's the power of these big corporations and how they can influence and affect the society and the people that we put in power to govern us on our behalf are actually being nullified by these big companies and, and the marketing campaigns and things like that that boost mental health. Look, the Citizens Commission on Human Rights is not against mental health. We're against abuse. If people were getting better, you wouldn't see us. But what is the fruit of psychiatry? What is the fruit of this industry? In the United States, the homeless population is out of control. It's like our veterans are killing themselves at 20 a day. Children are being labeled with mental disorders, uh, specific learning disorder and things like that, mathematical disorder, because we're not teaching the kids. And I have run programs where we have taken the worst of these kids and we're able to teach them. Some of them now operate as supervisors, electricians and, and things because we taught them how to study. We taught them how to read. It's not that the kids can't get it. It's the fact that the system gets paid for them not to get it. So 
when your kid can't read and the kids are not at a certain level, then the school gets more money to help these kids. But the moment you elevate the kid to where he's reading at a certain level, the school is threatened with losing funds. So they don't want to do that. Medicine is in the same boat. You make more money because now he has diabetes and you give him medicine that actually kind of help with the diabetes get worse. And then you give him another pill. And, and so it's a money making industry. You know, we're not in this because we're jealous of some group that can help mankind. That's what we do is help mankind. So when we spot what is going on, then we are the ones who feel that we must speak out against it. And I'm going to just tell you this. It's not fun walking into groups where everybody's getting paid money and have to tell them, hey, you know, I'm not a, you know, one of those masochists or whatever. I'm not looking for punishment and thing. But our organization feels that we have to deliver the truth at whatever the cost is. And the agenda is to help our children. We have a, a Fight for Kids campaign that, and, and we're trying to develop programs like my task force. Um, the name of it is a CCHR Task Force Against Racism and Modern Day Eugenics. And uh, because when you look at the problems we're having in America, let it even be with law enforcement. And I think, you know, we talked briefly about this. You look up and you see teachings like warrior training, bulletproof mind, which has the concept of killology. And, and a Dr. David Grossman, a professor of psychology at West Point, has taught this 20 years across the nation, that you kill without hesitation, without reservation, without guilt. He even in his trainings goes so far and say, if you kill somebody, you have better sex at night. What kind of individual does that? What you have law enforcement officers that you are now uh, having operate in fear, going out, interacting with the community with the idea that they're about to die any second. And I agree that it's a dangerous job because I used to be a law enforcement officer. I was a Los Angeles County Sheriff deputy and things can go bad in a hurry. And law enforcement officers, they don't get to run. When, when, when they get into a situation, they're expected to handle that situation. And now you got a guy putting into their heads, magnifying the idea that this is dangerous. And I've worked those streets too, and they are dangerous, but they're not to where we should be walking around paranoid and stuff. Most people want to assist police and want the help of the police. Mm -hmm. It's very unfortunate the amount of the misinformation that is being spread uh, by the pharma industry, but um, the, I am glad that there are organizations such as yours, CCHR, who are um, not afraid to speak up or not afraid to uh, educate, educate, uh, educate population and raise awareness on the abuses of psychiatric drugs and uh, suggest solutions, uh, better solutions that can be implemented rather than um, being uh, um, agreeing with what our pharma industry is doing. And also I want to applaud um, your uh, racism task force on um, uh, moving uh, to then restrain chokeholders and warrior training. You mentioned uh, the fear that is being put under the practice that is considered a, a long-term practice for 20 years. And now you can see how um, it's actually more dangerous, more harmful rather than benefiting the law, um, the front Online uh, law enforcement workers. From your own experience, you mentioned that you know the landscape and you know how this practice is harmful. And the fact that you were able uh, to, um, with your uh, task force, to ban the restrain and restrain uh, restrain such practices is very very important. If someone would like to support uh, CCHR, how can they do that? Well, they could go to our website, cchrint.org. That's cchrint.org. There's a wealth of information there. And also they can find the donation button and contribute to the cause. Uh, they can become members. We have uh, many types of memberships from basic to lifetime, things like that. If they want to know more about me, they could look at cchrtaskforce.com. 
www.ghostbusters.org. They can see what led me to being in this organization and a lot of the articles and things and the responses to press releases and things that I've done. Um, there's um, If they want to contact me directly right now, they can actually do it through my personal email, fshawjr at yahoo.com. Um, and uh, we're, you know, if they want to be a part, I, I forget what part of the world you're in right now, but uh, they can steal information. Yeah. yeah, our viewers are mostly from U.S., but we have international viewers from all over the world. And they can, they can, you know, express their interests, their needs. I can direct them to the different sites and help them if, if they need that type of help. So, and a lot of people right now are needing CCHR because a lot of families are being torn apart. And, and if I can just say this, if you take a child from their parents for whatever reason, and the child does not consider the parent part of the problem, now the system may, but the child may not. When you remove that child from the home, you are putting them in an environment where they know no one, they can't, they can't reach for their support system, uh, they can't talk to anybody. And then a psychiatrist walks in and asks that child, are you depressed? Are you sad? What, what would me and you be if right now they just put us in, in a prison and didn't tell us what we did, what's wrong, they didn't tell, wouldn't that be the normal reaction after a day or two to be, even as adults, to be like depressed? So then why would you then drug the kid as if they're mentally ill when, again, it is the proper response for the situation? Mm -hmm. And then we find out also that law enforcement has this medical model that comes from uh, psychiatry that has perpetuated racism since Dr. Benjamin Rush himself up into modern day. You know, these things have to be investigated. They have to be explored. And I truly thank you for the time you've given me to, to be here. I know we got to be up against the clock. <laughs> no, thank you so much for um, highlighting at the end that, um, that when the parent is uh, taken away and the child is left alone, the obvious reaction for them is to feel uh, depressed uh, rather than dragging uh, children with uh, psychiatric drugs. We need to be able to support them, to talk to them, to be a um, uh, mentor, to be a uh, absent parent rather than using such abusive practices and the work that your organization is doing in that direction is very uh, wonderful and i hope the work uh, continues going and if you viewing and listening would like to learn more about um the what uh, fred and uh, cchr are doing you can visit the website the link will be provided in the description and thank you so much fred it was wonderful to get to know you and very meaningful in and impactful uh, work that you and uh, your organization uh, CCHR are doing? Anytime you need me, you can call me back. There is so much. We can talk about racism, law enforcement. There's so much to talk about. I just thank you for this opportunity. And uh, like I said, anytime you need me, you want me on, you just bam, I'm there. For sure. For you listening, if you enjoyed this conversation, please press like and share button because this will show the YouTube and podcast algorithm that this conversation is important, that we need to eradicate abuses committed under the guise of mental health. Thank you and see you in the next.